Another tweet, another sell-off. Elon Musk's Twitter fingers were back at work yesterday, posting up a few memes. He first started it with this one right here, and then he went on to uh, post this one soon after here of this meme as well, and a few other replies. He was just, uh, I guess, bored yesterday. So thanks to his boredom, we saw a pullback here after we had already broken out or were at least trying to get that breakout out of that symmetrical triangle that we've been watching due to a few tweets by his Twitter fingers that pushed us all the way back down to $35,000 um, basically this morning, right? The good news is that we did get a bounce right on the support that we've been tracking and we're on our way back to the top of this symmetrical triangle. So we are back at square one, guys. Basically back to the same spot we were at exactly a week ago last Friday. So will we go up, will we go down? Let's take a look at the charts, guys. Hey, Jay here. Welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials, and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel, as always, is to empower you, the beautiful people in this space, with the knowledge and resources to get you up to that next level. So guys, if you enjoyed this video or if you've enjoyed any video of mine in the past, make sure to smash that like button. It helps us a ton on our way to try to hit 10,000 subscribers. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I will wait so you can do so. So let's jump right in. Let's not waste any more time. So if we go ahead and get started here on the weekly chart, you can see exactly what's been going on um, over the long term here. And we had the huge rise up and then we kind of stalled out here towards the top. Um, we had a lot of issues there at the $60,000 mark. And then with a lot, a lot of bad news over the last few weeks, over these two weeks right here, you can see that we had the big dump off there. The last week and this week basically we've kind of been uh it's printed indecisive candles right we've had indecisive candles here after kind of a blow off the bottom there so we do have a few things holding us up here so the first thing that you'll see here is this white line right here so this right here is a 50 week moving average right so the 50 week moving average is holding the price right there so that has been a pretty strong and significant support level in previous bull runs. If we go ahead and look back a bit. So you can see back in 2019, this same moving average was kind of holding us up here and, and was trying to keep us going, right? Keep the, this bull run alive when, it, when it, it was trying to start. It hadn't started yet. But then, of course, uh, when the pandemic hit, we fell way below it. And uh, that kind of is when we finally hit bottom there. In 2016 and 17's bull run, you can see that we tested this level several times here, coming all the way back down and touching it before continuing up. You, you'll see that throughout this whole time, anytime it touched, it definitely took off there. And it was a really good support, even when we fell as well we were able to bounce back up tested it again bounced again and finally when we fell below it that's kind of when we hit that bottom as well and if you go all the way back to 2013's bull run you'll see that this level also played a major role here um, this is the bull run that i've been saying that's the most similar right now to where we are currently and and this is another reason why because we're right we had the the big run up then we had a big drop and we're bouncing on that 50 day moving average. And you'll see that after bouncing on the 50 day moving average for s several months, then it finally took off and it, it went parabolic, right? So that's kind of what we're looking for here this time around as well. If we pull up the logarithmic uh, growth scale here, 
you'll see that in 2013, we had that uh, test of the 50 day moving average and then ran up to the top of this growth curve, right? If we zoom out a bit and look back at 2017, you will see that uh, we kind of had the same thing here where we went to the top of the uh, growth curve here, right? That was 20K before the bull run ended. So now if you look at where we currently are right now, you will see that we're not there yet. We're not at the top of the growth curve. We've gone up and then we've had another pullback here. We had, remember we had this pullback back in January. Uh, this is a second uh, pullback during this bull run that we've had so far. And we are still not up at the top. So um, in order for us to get to the top, that's going to be a price above $100,000. So that's going to be anywhere between $100,000 to, I would say, $150,000 probably. If we go all the way to December, that, that top is around one hundred and forty dollars to $150,000. Remember, in 2013, we had this same type of movement. We went up about halfway to the uh, growth curve, then we dropped under it, and then we took off and went parabolic, and that's when we hit that top of the, of the growth curve there. In 2017, we did see some pullbacks here, but we didn't see um, as much pullbacks as we're having currently, even though we did see the pullbacks here. It was a little different in 2017. Now we're here, and it looks so similar to 2013, except that it hasn't been that fast. In 2013, it was basically two candles all the way up, then one or two candles all the way down, and then you know some consolidation and then continuation. Here we've had the candles up basically, then some consolidation, then the candles down. So we can expect possibly some consolidation as we work our way back up hopefully to that 50k mark and then if we can get back above that mark and get back above this previous all-time high that's when i'm thinking that we could potentially shoot up and grind our way up to that hundred thousand dollar mark and beyond which would be the top of this curve which at that point would be that probably the end of the bull market cycle that's why the 50 week moving average is so important. <laughs> um, so the second uh, thing that we're watching here, as you guys can see, we have this Fibonacci level here, the 50% level. That's also in confluence with this uh, 50 week moving average here as well. And last but not least, we have this right here. Th this is a zone where a lot of buyers are sitting in. So we are currently in that same exact zone here. So this is going to be a very, very powerful area where a lot of buyers will be sitting to continue buying the dip and propping up that price. Those, those are a few reasons here um, why we're being held up pretty well. And then if you look at um, the current weekly candles, you can see that we've been getting higher lows each week. Um, and hopefully we can continue that. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in to the daily here, we can draw basically a symmetrical triangle from the some of the supports and resistances that we have been seeing here during the last few weeks. So you can see here now, depending where you drew your your symmetrical triangle, supporting resistance, all that um, obviously is going to differ if we had the breakout or not previously to to Elon Musk tweet. So you can see on this one, this particular one that we just drew here that we reached the top of the symmetrical triangle here. And it's like if Elon Musk was just waiting for us to get to the top of there and purposely pushing the price down in confluence with the resistance to push us back down to the bottom here of the triangle. But as you can see, it did respect that support and it gave a bounce right back to that upside. And we've continuously been getting lower highs as you guys can see over the last few weeks since this dump off in uh, on the 19th of May. Now, although we've been getting higher lows, we have not been getting higher highs. So that's why that's what creates basically this triangle. So now the question again this weekend is, will we get a break to the upside or will we fall or break down to the downside? Now, 
an answer has to come within, I mean, we still have about to the 11th. So we have about another week in this particular uh, symmetrical triangle that I drew today. We have about another week before it really needs to, uh, before it reaches basically its apex here, right? And it needs to make a decision. You do see that as the triangle has gotten tighter, the range which it's been trading in has also gotten tighter um, with the triangle. So guys, a move is coming soon. There's no doubt about it. The only thing is we don't know if it's going to go, a move, it's going to be a move up or if it's going to be a move down. Now we're going to give you the forecast and the projected price targets in this scenario, in both scenarios, whether it goes up or down, right? We're going to measure the bottom of the triangle to the top of the triangle here. Then we're going to go ahead and move this to where let's say it breaks out at that apex and that gives us a target of exactly fifty thousand dollars now if we just uh copy this over and move this to the bottom of the apex if we were to break down this now gives us a target a price target of about twenty five thousand dollars so those are the two different price targets depending on which way we break now, of course, this is just from a technical analysis standpoint. Things don't always complete themselves 100% as far as targets um, because there's always other things in play, other variables that come into play. And another thing with analysis, you know, it doesn't take into account um, when people tweet, for example, and, and manipulate the price or move the market in one, one direction or another. Um, so if we were to see any negative tweets or news, that could cause a breakdown, then this would be the range of our, for the support. So it could be anywhere between 25 to $30,000, I would say. Um, this is also where there's a Fibonacci level right here, right around that $28,000 range. Um, and at 30,000 is, is more or less where we bounced off last time. Now, if we break above, like I already told you guys before, uh, we need a break above 42,000. That is going to be the biggest level there that we need to get above. As long as we stay below 42,000, we're leaving that back door open for a dump off, a sell off all the way down to that $30,000 range again, possibly 28, possibly 25. All right, guys, so, so far we've covered exactly what's been going on in the charts. Uh, we showed you guys how 2013's bull run looks very similar to this bull run and uh, the possibilities and why I believe we're still in a bull market and we have uh, much more room to go. We also, of course, did an analysis of where we currently are right now with the symmetrical triangle and the possibilities, the projected prices, depending which way we break, with whether we break out or break down. Now, next, we're going to talk about some possible trade entries if you guys are looking for short term trades. But before that, make sure that you're smashing that like button consistently on all your accounts, create new accounts and smash the like button even more. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Share this with your friends, with your family, with all your loved ones. We're going to go ahead and look at some possible trade scenarios, trade setup scenarios. But before we do that, let's all smash the like button at the same time on the count of three. You guys ready? One, two, three, boom. So now that we have all successfully smashed the like button and shared this video with our friends, families, and loved ones, um, let's go ahead and take a look at some possible trade scenarios. Now, there's not a lot here, I'm not gonna lie, because for Bitcoin, I'm still not liking anything really above, you know, below 42,000. I will take a about 1% risk or less on a trade, on a break above 40,000, as that is a, a resistance there. So we can enter with some momentum, but we have to keep in mind, we wanna take profits early. We wanna trail early. We don't wanna wait because we could, we could that could get rejected very quickly. So above 40,000 and then the main target, the main entry we're looking for and we're targeting is above $42,000. If we pull back for any reason, if we kind of go to the downside here, then uh, that entry that we would possibly and this is very risky guys especially on a breakdown this is going to be very very risky here but above if we see it go below thirty five thousand and then go back above thirty five thousand that is a possible entry 
Again, we're risking less than 1% on that entry though. For Ethereum guys, we basically have this flat top pattern here and uh, and we're not entering anything below $3,000 at the moment, possibly something back at the 2,500 area. But if it went back down that low, it gets very, very risky. So right now the only entries we're watching for Ethereum are above three thousand um, dollars that's the only entry we're interested in alrighty guys that is pretty much it this wraps up another week where we've put out five straight videos whether it was uh, live streams or recorded videos um, another week we're been at this now for about 10 months almost 10 months and in the 10 months we're almost at 10,000 subscribers guys so if you guys are not subscribed to the channel guys please make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're at 9,500, 500 people away from the 10,000 subscriber milestone. One last thing, guys, don't forget that we're doing giveaways every Friday, okay? So you have, you have to comment on the videos Mondays through Fridays, um, and then we will randomly pick one of those videos to, from throughout the week and choose a somebody who commented on the video. Last week's winner was Michael Rain. Congrats, Michael. We're sending you the $100 that you won from last week. And, uh, and then this week's winner will be picked in the next. We're going to give you guys about a day or so to uh, comment on all the videos and we will pick a winner. Thank you guys so much. I hope we all have a great weekend. I hope you guys make tons of profits. I hope we break out here and make tons of profits. Till next time, guys, as always, peace and love.